Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date I have a Backman tank engine. I have never ever tried the Backman Jinty. I have tried quite a few of the Hornby ones which are very inexpensive and they work nicely but they're not incredibly detailed so obviously for a, quite a long time now I have had my eye on the Backman Jinty. I've been curious to know how they compare, how much more detailed they are and whether there are any differences that I'm not aware of. So for today's review I do have a Backman Jinty. This is really quite a nice model already actually looking at it through the front of the box with the British Railways written on the side of the tanks and I bought this from the model centre TMC. Um, the RRP for this I believe is £109.95 which places it pretty well up there in terms of price for an 060 tank engine. However, amazingly, I got mine for a considerable discount. Uh, I found this at TMC for £69, which is a pretty nice discount. I'm sure you'll agree it's bordering on sort of half price, isn't it? It's not a million miles away. So I'm really interested to see what this is like. Obviously, the Ginty is an incredibly famous and popular class. It's a bit silly that I've not actually reviewed the proper Backman one up until now. But today I am rectifying that mistake and I'm bringing you along on the journey too. So let's find out what it's like. Let's have fun. All right, so the Backman Jinty. And I believe this model has been in circulation for the last couple of decades or so. However, it is a model that still seems to receive quite a lot of love. And a few years ago, I believe Backman released a sound fitted version of their Jinty which I would actually be really interested in trying. I don't know, when smaller tank engines like this have sound, that always seems all the more impressive to me. I guess the smaller the loco, the more challenging it is to pull off that illusion. So yeah, maybe that's something for the future, but this version is just DCC ready, as I understand it. And if I show you the end of the box, you can see exactly which version I have. So it's 32-236. It is a Fowler Class 3F Ginty in brackets, their famous nickname. 47619, that's the running number and it is in the British Railways black and this does support a next 18 pin DCC decoder um, which presumably can't have been the case when this was released you know a decade or more ago so like I say yeah the model seems to be getting upgrades it seems to be getting love so even though it's not sort of brand new I've still got reasonably high hopes that this will be a decent model anyway if you're interested in the class I will just flip the box over so there is the brief history nice little paragraph all about the Jinties as always pause and read that if you'd like to to, but I will give you some history in just a second. For now though, time to quench my curiosity, I think. I've had this for a little while, I think now's the time to finally get this out for the first time, I might add, and see what this is like. I think this is going to be a strange one because I'm so used to the Hornby Railroad ones of a sort of train set calibre, so I think seeing a super detailed, fingers crossed, such wood, super detailed GNT, uh, will be quite a strange thing for me to witness after all these years. Anyway, let's pull out the blister pack, see if I can get a sense of how much this model weighs. I'm hoping this will be a good quality model with a fair bit of die cast on it, because yeah, they were quite powerful things by the end of their development. And I've got to say, yeah, the blister pack here does have a fair bit of heft to it. Although you, you can never tell until the loco's in your hands. Okay, so this paperwork here seems quite modern. Uh, again, this looks like it will have been updated from earlier releases. So welcome, running in, lubrication. Yeah, that's all fair enough. Shows you the lubrication points. All looks fairly standard. Let's have a look inside, see if I can get a sense of the mechanism. Okay, so lubricating the motor. You can see what looks like a fairly standard Backman can motor there. I cannot see any flywheel or anything like that, but whether or not it's a five pole motor will remain to be seen. Hopefully I'll be able to find out if I pop the body off. Uh, body removal shows you how to do that, that's fair enough. The DCC equipment inside there, and you can also see where the speaker goes. On more modern Bankman Locos, they have shipped speakers with their Locos. I don't think this one has one though, I think you have to provide your own, but there is a space for it at least. And then on the back, what's this? Uh, oh, DCC sound continued. Okay, that's fair enough. And I think this is just about the collector's cloak, yes, which I'm not part of, so yeah, I won't bother looking at that. Okay, any accessories? Okay, so there are no accessories at all, which is unusual actually, not many locos like that. In a sense though, that's quite good because it means all the detail for the loco is fitted at the factory. So, you know, if you're 
you've got shaky hands or if you're not too keen on fine work, uh, this model won't be a problem for you, hopefully. Right, come on then, let's have a look. I'll tell you what, I can tell just by opening this packaging, the fact that it's stationary, does suggest that this Loco is quite a big weighty thing. Right, let's pull it out. Yeah, it is actually. Yes, there is a fair bit of weight to this Loco. It looks absolutely amazing. Already, this feels like an alien in my hands because I can see riveting all over the smoke box. I can see loads of little separately fitted parts, which, as far as I'm concerned, is completely unheard of on a Jinty because I'm only familiar with the basic Hornby ones. So yeah, I can tell that the running plate is made of heavy, quite thick die-cast metal, which is great. I will pop this on the scales in a little while so I can give you an idea of how much this weighs. But yes, already this looks like a superb little locomotive. I love the Jinties, something tells me I'm going to love this model. So, little bit of history for you on this very famous and very revered class. And then together we'll take a close look at this and see what the level of detail is really like. So the LMS Jinty, or the Fowler 3F, was introduced in 1924 and it represented the ultimate development in a really long line of six coupled tank engines. Despite the engine being produced after grouping as part of the LMS fleet, the design was very much a product of the Midland Railway. Some of the Jinties were in fact based on rebuilt Midland 2441 locomotives, which dated well back to the 19th century. This design was never bettered though. 422 of them were built over just seven years, and the class actually remained in service right up until almost the end of British steam. I think 1967 was when the last withdrawal took place. They featured two internal cylinders, boasted attractive effort in the region of 90 kilonewtons, and they had a top speed of about 60 miles per hour. And because so many of them were built, a healthy nine examples do remain under preservation today, while the rest were unfortunately scrapped. So there it is then, the Backman Jinty up close and personal for you. And the model isn't terrible or anything, but I've got to confess that I am a little bit disappointed in this one because in terms of features, it really doesn't compare favorably to other 060 tank engines on the market of a same or similar RRP. I mean, think of the other 060s we've got on the market. There is the Hornby B2 Peckett, almost entirely made of metal, huge amounts of decoration. You've got the Hatton's P-Class, which was actually 10 pounds cheaper. Again, loads and loads of decoration on there, fantastic quality. The Dapol Terriers, 110 pounds, hugely decorated, massively detailed. And then of course, you've got the Backman Jinty, again, at an RRP of 110 pounds almost no decoration to speak of. Of course, that is through no fault of Backman's, that's quite prototypical, but they can't use the livery and decoration as an excuse for the high price on this one, can they? And look inside the cab, absolutely zero painted detail, so that is an incredibly underwhelming cab. And there are other little areas which aren't that modern and are not that impressive. I mean, underneath the boiler, for instance, you've got no representation of the valve gear or anything like that. It's really not the model I thought it was going to be. Now, obviously, I did not pay £110 for this. I paid £69, which is actually a lot more like it. But it's not the bargain that I was led to believe it was. That's actually more or less exactly what this Loco is worth. And even then, you've got sort of the Hornby Terriers, which are available at that sort of price normally. And even they have much more decoration and they do have painted cabs and more detail. So, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing from that standpoint. Again, in my opinion, this is another one of Backman's little rip-offs. That being said though, the model is not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, and it sure is a big improvement over the Hornby Jinty, and I should jolly well hope so for the price. So that die-cast running plate does bring the Loco quite a lot of weight. It comes in at 191 grams, which is some 50 grams heavier than the Hornby Jinty, so you do indeed have a very nice heavy Loco, which is great. What little decoration there is, is done quite nicely. So you've got the British Railways lettering on the side of the water tanks. You've got the running number and presumably a builder's plate underneath it, just on the coal bunker. You've got the little 3F classification on the side of the cab. And of course, the buffer beams are nicely decorated as well into that red paint. So that's pretty good. There are one or two nice features, it must be said. You've got the separately fitted metal handrails, which is a nice quality feature. So at least they're there. You do have metal safety valves, which I always think look much better than plastic ones. There is a bit of cack on that front one. I'm not sure what that is. Spoilt the finish very slightly, but overall there isn't a quality issue with this model, I wouldn't say. 
and then you've got the overall improved level of detail compared with the Hornby one. So I've already talked about the smoke box area. Again, lots of riveted detail around there. Looks really nice. And then around the other side of the smoke box, you can see an array of very complex separately fitted equipment. And the resolution in some of those parts is really quite impressive. So from any sort of distance, the illusion is incredible on those. You've got the separately fitted lamp brackets, which again seem quite sturdy and fine. Separately fitted handrail on the front of the smoke box door, as well as the running number duplicated on there as well. Separately fitted lamp irons on the metal running plate. And then on top of the water tanks, you can see there are quite a few parts. I think those little turning wheels might be separately fitted. And generally, the level of detail there in particular is a huge improvement over the other Jinties that I've looked at in the past. The coal bunker is a nicely detailed one. You've got this plastic coal guard fitted all around it, which is quite convincing, if you ask me. And then the cab windows, the back ones are not glazed, but you do have that sort of grill effect to them, which I think looks quite nice. And then there is actual proper glazing on the front windows, although from the inside, that doesn't look exactly convincing. But given that we haven't got any painted cab detail at all, I think that is the least of the issues, really. And then around the back, you can see you've got four more separately fitted lamp irons. The vacuum pipes are pre-fitted to the buffer beams, as are the metal sprung buffers. So like I say, it's not completely light on features. That's quite a nice feature. And then the NEM mounted couplings are pre-fitted to the model and they are quite stiffly sprung, but because of the short wheel base of the Loco, I can't see that being much of a problem. The wheels are cast metal, I believe, and then they've been blackened. They're not ultra realistic like some of Hornby's wheels are. You can obviously see the axles poking through, but they have been blackened to make them that little bit more subtle. So I suppose that isn't too bad. Overall, it's a decent looking locomotive. The level of detail is so-so. I think it is the lack of paintwork in the cab that lets this down the most because with an RRP of 110 pounds, it really needed to have every possible feature it could have done and the painted cab would have been an easy one to check off. So for sort of 69, 70 pounds, something like that, the model is just about reasonable, but don't do as I did and buy one thinking you're getting a bargain because actually you're paying more or less what the model is worth. But that's only from a level of detail and an appearance standpoint. How does the Loco perform and what does the mechanism look like? Well, I will find out and I will report back to you. Be back in just a second. So there she is, the Backman Jinty down onto the track, ready for the first test. And I've got to tell you, I'm not feeling any less disappointed having seen the mechanism. I was slightly underwhelmed by the level of detail, but I'm actually very slightly infuriated by the mechanism. To my mind, this is too poor to be acceptable, but I'll show it to you, you, you tell me what you think, I guess, down in the comments. So first of all, pickups are okay. We've got one pickup per wheel, as you can see, traditional wiper pickups don't have a problem with that. Removing the base keeper plate is a bit of a chore because they've hardwired it instead of using the slightly more expensive but infinitely more convenient spring-loaded contacts. So I couldn't get the base keeper plate off very far, but I did get it off far enough to see that there are no proper bearings fitted to the driving wheels and they set into square slots in the chassis, which is a pet hate of mine. I mean, that is just unnecessarily cheap and nasty. I don't understand why Backman do it. I don't know of any other manufacturer that does that and to my mind, there is absolutely no excuse. Body removal was quite easy. Here is the chassis. There's the motor. It is a three pole motor. By looking through one of the little holes and rotating the shaft, I have counted what I think is three poles. So that's pretty outdated. You can see there's no flywheel or anything like that. And we've got capacitors bodged onto the housing of the motor instead of being nicely placed on a circuit board as other manufacturers do it. And there isn't even any cover over the worm drive and the gears. Those are just exposed. So there's not very much pride taken in the design of this mechanism, is there? And what really makes me mad is that they do know better because, like I've said before, their latest tank engines, their latest locomotives have all had much, much better mechanisms. And yet, here they are still selling this. A few years ago, they were magically able to upgrade the DCC compatibility to include that next generation socket because that's a marketable feature but they weren't able to upgrade the shoddy mechanism even though they've demonstrated that they are aware of the advantages of a better quality mechanism by producing their latest models with them. The one thing I will say is that the gauge is okay. 14.5 millimeters back to back on each wheel. Tiny, tiny little bit tight, but not to the point where it will make a negative difference, I don't think. So there you go. I mean, there's not very much positive in the mechanism, is there? Which makes this model for 110 pounds, that's the RRP, a bit of a joke, if you ask me. 
all of the other models available at that price point have much, much, much better mechanisms, and even the £30 Hornby Railroad Jinties do have proper bearings on the wheel set. That is unforgivable. And you might think, oh, this is 10 years old. No, this version of the model was introduced in 2017, as far as I can tell, and I bought this brand new last year, 2020. But let's see how it performs. Hopefully that motor will be a good quality one, even though it is three pole. Hopefully there'll be enough power there so that we've got actual torque in this mechanism. And hopefully it will be enough to overcome the friction of those horrible square bearings. Well, let's find out, shall we? First test, does it actually work? Yes, quite nicely. That was a really nice start, wasn't it? Oh, it has stopped on the express point. Not sure why, but it has not been running. I should say that, and there was a section on the instructions about running in. So I think, well, I always, I always run a loco in, so it doesn't much matter. Uh, yeah, before I draw any conclusion, I will of course run this in properly, 30 minutes in each direction. But straight out of the box, it seems to be halfway quiet, pretty smooth. It's quite impressive actually, given how awful the mechanism is. And again, as I always say, longevity is not a given. I have no idea how long it's going to last. Given the state of those bearings, I would guess, not very, but we shall see. Trying to crawl now, turning it up real gently. Ooh. So there's cogging there, and of course there is, because it's a three-pole motor without a flywheel. But I am going so slow as to be cruel. And who knows, maybe that will improve with a bit of running in. It is pretty slow though, so the fact that it's ticking over at all should be congratulated, I suppose. A bit faster. So it's a bit more smooth at that sort of speed. Sort of. Yeah, that's not bad. I think considering the state of the mechanism, it's not performing badly right now. But let's set it off around the layout, just check that it takes the curves okay. And by the way, the center driven axle is compensated, so there's a bit of springiness to that. So that should mean on layouts, well, like mine I suppose, where the track work isn't great and isn't 100% straight and smooth, uh, it should be a little bit more able to cope with it as I understand it. Truthfully, I've never really noticed any advantage to that compensation, but hey, why not? We'll take it. If it works all right, no problem. Okay, 50% speed, let's give it a go. Okay, so at 50% speed, it seems all right. It's not too fast. Perhaps it's a little bit on the speedy side, but not to cause a problem. I would say the gearing is more or less okay. It handled the curves without slowing down, which is good. So obviously the fact that this is just an 060 wheel set as opposed to a, a 210 or something like that means that those square bearings, oh, I can't believe that, are not adding up and causing huge amounts of friction on curves and such. And obviously there is plenty of lateral movement in the axles so that it's handling the second radius there. So yeah, I'm really not a fan of that mechanism. For that price, the mechanism could and should have been much, much better. However, from a purely performance standpoint, it is actually running quite nicely. So I can see this getting a good score on performance. However, it's got a good hour's work to do before I can say that for certain. So I'll join you again when the running in has completed. Okay, I am back, and at long last I think I have found the good in this model, because it does run really, really nicely. It doesn't seem as though it's been designed to last dreadfully long, but for now, right out of the box, the performance is very, very good. So it's nice and smooth, no derailing on curves, no slowing down that I noticed, at least without a load. It does run a little bit noisily, there is a rattling and clicking noise as it runs, but I notice that quite a bit with the Locos that don't have proper bearings, so that could well be the reason. Anyway, the crawl was a little bit less than perfect when I first gave it a try. Let's find out whether running in has improved that at all, so I'm just turning it up gently now. Woo! Right, let's try that again, let's go back, let's back up, because that seemed to kick in real sudden. And I'm not sure whether it was my fault or the locos, so I'll try and do this again, gradual as possible. See when it kicks in, still turning, still turning. Oh, yeah, that was not me, that was very gradual there. And if anything, the performance seems to be very slightly worse now than it was when it was new. That's a weird one, isn't it? But yeah, clear evidence of cogging, not a great crawl, and I'm not surprised. 
It must be said though, the torque, at least at the higher speeds, is all right. If I turn it up to 50% speed, you can see it can turn its wheels without any issues, which suggests that while the motor is just three pole and it doesn't have a flywheel or anything, as I might have liked, it does seem to be a fairly good quality one and one capable of a fair amount of power output, even though at the low speeds, obviously the torque just isn't there. Try backwards. Yeah, that seems to be more or less the slowest it can go. And as you can see, it's not dreadfully constant. It's cogging awfully. And I think it might have stopped entirely there. Has it cut out? Or is it just stalled? Yeah, it was just stalled. So again, come on, there's no excuse for poor quality mechanisms. If we're spending this kind of money on a model, it needs to be designed properly, designed to last, and it needs to have the best possible features. Other manufacturers prove that it doesn't break the bank and it is possible to include proper bearings at the very least, and then preferably that five pole motor, or even the cordless motors, which do actually work pretty nicely. The flywheel, the serviceability, I mean, all of this is pretty basic stuff and most manufacturers are getting it right these days. It is a shame that Backman have allowed so many of their logos to age to the point where they're just not meeting modern standards. I think it's definitely time for an upgrade on several of their logos. Anyway, anyway, the pulling force is okay. I measured a tractive effort of 0.19 Newtons, which is about in line with other locomotives of this size. It should be enough for the loco to haul about 14 coaches in that region somewhere. And so I've set up a fairly hefty rake of wagons, not too many, I think there's, there's less than 20 there, with an LMS brake van, so that should at least be a good demonstration of the Loco's pulling power. So, into reverse, let's see how the coupling goes, and let's see how she behaves with a load. Yeah, as you can see, it's not running the best. A little bit inconsistent. I've got to say, my Hornby Jinties are not very far away in terms of performance. <laughs> And one of them is like 30 years old and it's not in a good state. And the other one was one of my first ever Locos and I've had it for years and years. So, yeah, the fact that a brand new Backman version is not much better, it's a bit concerning to say the least. And speak of the devil, on the middle line, I do have my Hornby Jinty. In fact, shall I try, shall I try a bit of a crawl? Because I would actually be interested to see if this can beat Backman's on a crawl. I'm not convinced that it will, because again, this does have just a cheap three-pole motor, but then again, so does the Backman, so let's find out. And crawl, yep, yep. It's a better crawl than Backman's. Look at that. I'll give it, it's not very consistent, and I think it has cut out. Let's just help it out, it is on the express point there, although not on the dead zone. Oh. It didn't like that, did it? <laughs> but when it crawled, it was better. That's shocking. Come on, see if we can do it again. Look at that. It's smoother, I will say. It's smoother. It's been through the mill, though, that one. But still, still, good crawl. And then on the inside line, I have the Johnson 1F, I think it is. And this is also a Backman design. It is quite similar in terms of mechanism, except this does have the proper turned metal bearings, which I suppose makes this a good case for comparison. So let's see what the crawl's like with this one. It's got a load now, I suppose that's not ideal, which is actually largely similar. So I suppose it must be the motor that is the limiting factor in these. If it is the same motor, then the performance is remarkably similar, isn't it? But there you go, just a little train on that one, the 1F. So at least for now, the Loco is working pretty nicely. Let's take a look on these curves. Yeah, no noticeable slowing down, so that's pretty good. There's obviously plenty of torque there. So as far as the performance goes, overall, no major complaints. So, can I recommend this one? Well, for a penny more than I paid, you know, the £69 mark, no, I, I just can't recommend it. There are many, many other 060 tank engines that are either cheaper, better quality, more features, more detailed, better decorated, or multiple or possibly all of those that you can buy and that I expect you'd be more satisfied with. If you desperately want a Ginty and you don't want to go for the basic Hornby Railroad ones, and you can find a Backman one for a good low price, 
then sure, yeah, maybe I could just about recommend it, but it certainly isn't going to blow you away with its features or its performance. What I would really love to see is a new Ginty. I mean, they're so popular, everybody loves them. I would love to see even a different manufacturer, maybe even Dapol or Hornby, make the decision to produce a new Ginty and pull out all of the stops and then they could sell it for £110 and it would be a good deal. But no, as far as this one's concerned, it's okay, nothing about it, except the mechanism is terrible, but it really is starting to show its age now, which is a pity. Let's have some ratings then for the Backman Ginty. And disappointingly, yes, it isn't that great, unfortunately. The level of detail is all right in places. I mean, the overall finish of the model is lovely. There are a fair few separately fitted parts, including handrails and other nice little bits of detailing. I do happen to really like the metal safety valves, even though mine were not realized particularly nicely. However, it does lose a couple of stars, first of all for the cab detail, which was very, very poor and old-fashioned and outdated, and I do love myself some cab detail, so I have knocked off a star for that. And there were other little bits like the lack of valve gear between the frames as well. Again, that is a detail that I really love to see, and when I pay £110 or even £69 for a model, those are the little touches of realism that I expect to see, and it's a shame that I didn't on this one. Performance is pretty good actually, surprisingly good given the mechanism. I've given it four star. It's smooth, it's reasonably powerful. I have seen a better crawl though, so it does just lose one star for that. The pulling power is all right, 0.19 newtons, 14 coaches. That is very much in line with the 1P, the Hornby B2 and the Rapido J70. So no problem at all with the pulling power, that's more or less bang on. The mechanism though, I've had to give one star. Really, really poor quality mechanism as far as I'm concerned and given the RRP that is again just not acceptable so you've got no proper bearings square bearings on the chassis three pole motor I think complete lack of flywheel and I've also just knocked off a star for the general shoddiness of the design so you've got hardwire pickups which are just difficult to get off dodgy soldering around the motor capacitors just bodged on looks like an afterthought but it can't be an afterthought because almost all of Backman's locos have them and they haven't even got a cover on the worm drive and the gear set. They've just cut corners unnecessarily with this mechanism, I think, which is a shame. The quality, though, is okay. Now, it does lose a star for the poor design of mechanism, but the actual manufacturing quality seems pretty good. I couldn't see any glue marks. The moulding, despite the tooling being quite old now, is still nice and crisp, and everything was fitted to the model as it should have been, so no major problem with the quality. Value for money, then, is a tricky one. £109.95, I think, is ridiculous as an RRP. And even though £69 in comparison sounded like a bargain when I bought it, I've since learned that that is not the case. In fact, that's perhaps a little bit more than what the model is worth. So let's see. The RRP, I would give one star. The £69, I would give four star. So I've split and given it two and a half. Now, unfortunately, the only way this model would be completely all right, given the mechanism and lack of detail, would be if they were knocking them out for 50 quid. So yes, still cheaply produced, but crucially, cheaply sold as well. You'd know what you were getting yourself into that way, and it wouldn't matter if the model didn't last terribly long, and it would make a good practice model for a bit of sort of extra detailing and perhaps a bit of weathering. But in reality, £69 being the very cheapest you can possibly find this for, and I don't believe you can find it for that right now, value for money's not there, unfortunately. Overall then, that is 6.01 out of 10, a real, real pity. I think had the mechanism been a little bit better, the score would have been much more impressive. Into the logbook it goes though, 23rd place above the ROD 280 and below the 9F. Funnily enough, those two models also had unforgivably poor quality mechanisms. I think the industry has moved on from this sort of thing, Backman. We're not seeing mechanisms like this anymore from any manufacturers, I guess, except Helgen. So models like this need to be upgraded, reduced in price, or discontinued. You choose, Backman. Any of those would be fine. Well, folks, that is it for another review. Again, I'm sorry that this one wasn't a little bit more positive. I think it's time for Backman to get a move on and start releasing some new models, because at the moment, I'm stuck with their existing range, and as I'm finding out this year, quite a few items in that range are a little bit below par, aren't they, to say the least. So hopefully Backman's newer releases will impress quite a lot more. And as I always say in these scathing Backman reviews, that is the case, to be fair. They have, by and large, learnt their lesson and improved their standards with their new releases. 
but I do still take issue with the fact that they continue to sell locos like this, like the 9F, like the Hall Class, at those high prices without making considerable upgrades to the detail and most importantly the mechanism. So yeah, I think that is my major gripe. Had this been produced 10 years ago and I bought it second hand, it would be a very different story. But the fact that I bought this recently within the last year means that I can't give it that benefit of the doubt. Anyway though, I've got a, a decent looking Ginty now. I've got one that is a slight improvement over the Hornby Ginty now, so I guess that is something to celebrate. But I guess I had hoped it would have been better. For now though, that is just about it. Do let me know what you think. Have you got a Bankman Ginty? Did you notice any of its shortfalls? Are you happy with it? What did you pay? I mean, if you're willing to share that sort of thing, feel free to, and uh, I'll be interested to see what other people think. For now though, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you for your time, and I will see you for another review very, very soon. All right, cheers folks, take care.